later on you're going to be listening to this recording of the read um, as many times as necessary to find out what the student's strengths are, um, where their gaps are, and just to get a sense of what needs to be done in order to um, help this student. So right in front of you right now, you have the uh, Miss Q coding sheet, and uh, you have the passage, and you have the recording. So we don't look at the Miss Qs in the entire passage. What we're going to be looking at is the number of miscues or reading errors that the student made in a hundred words. So generally, we allow the student to read the first few sentences, the first paragraph, so they get a chance to warm up. And you're actually during that time listening for you know, strategies and behaviors and things that are, they're doing because they've never seen this read before. But we actually only begin to record the miscues from about that second paragraph there for about a hundred words, which is down there at, uh, yes, about there. Ten. So give or ta take a hundred words. So that's what we're going to be listening to. We're going to look at um, things like um, errors, omissions, substitutions, um, pauses, repeats, and all of those things within that hundred words. And that's going to give us a profile of um, whether the student is able to read this passage comfortably um, independently or it's an instructional piece for them or it's a frustration piece but also we're going to get a sense of what they actually do um, when they're reading what their word attack skills are you know how their phrasing is their their fluency their prosody their rate of reading so all of those things we're going to be listening for within this read. When you're listening to the read for the first time, you're not going to try to tackle every single miscue on this list. It's too much. What I do with the first read is I just listen and when I come, when a student um, makes a miscue, I'm just going to put an X over the word or if there was a missing punctuation or whatever the miscue was, I'm going to put an X over that, just for that first that uh, first read. Just to help me identify the words that the student has read correctly, I generally put a check mark over the words that have been read correctly because it keeps me focused and on track. Flying flowers. Right? <laughs> um, there are many kinds of insects. There are big ones, little ones, ugly ones, bit, biting ones, and helpful ones. But there is one kind of insect that most people agree is the most beautiful one. This insect is often called the flying flower. It is a beautiful butterfly. Or Beautiful butterfly. Butterflies are insects that have two pairs of wings. The wings are covered with tiny scales. The scales are different colors. They're, these scales give the butterfly its beautiful color. Butterflies smell and here by using their long, thick, antennas. Yeah. Butterflies can bite or chew. They use long tubes like tongues to get at the food they eat from flowers. Butterflies begin as eggs. Then they hatch into caterpillars. A caterpillar from a hard skin. When they finally break out of the hard skin, they are beautiful with 
butterflies with colors, wings. Adults, adult butterflies must lay eggs soon. They do not live very long. Butterflies and moths are different. Butterflies like the day, moths like the night. Moths are not as colorful, as beautiful, colorful as butterflies. Butterflies I'm not sure what that one is. Yeah. Are suddenly with moths tend to have large fat Yeah, I'm just not sure what that moths from cocoons before turning into Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, insects. Most beautiful, or most, most butterflies do not come from cuckoos. Yes, you will miss Miss Q's in that first pass. And that's why it's great to have the recording because you'll read it, you know, you listen to the recording a few times and then the ones that you missed on the first time, you know, you'll catch in the second time. Once you've done that first pass, what you're, you're going to be able to find out almost immediately is with the X's where you've put the X's is whether this is independent level, instructional level or frustration level. So in that hundred words that we've marked off, mm -hmm. you're going to count up your X's and you're going to find out whether the student has made five or more errors, you know, 10 or more errors and so on. So let's count them up now and find out what they are counted up five X's so that's a minimum we know that there were five X's so it's possible that this passage is independent reading level or you might have missed a few of the miscues in that first pass so we see those uh, five possible errors it could mm -hmm. be independent reading level but we're going to listen again now and we're going to try to fine-tune you know where the miscues are so the nice thing about doing the second pass is that you can really zero in now on the X's. So you don't have to worry about the words that were checked that would indicate he read them correctly. Right. So when you come to those X's that are on there, you're going to now try to be precise with what the miscue was. Flying flowers. <laughs> um, there are many kinds of insects. There are big ones, little ones, ugly ones, bit, biting ones, and helpful ones. But there is one kind of insect that most people agree is the most beautiful one. This insect is often called the flying flower. It is a beautiful butterfly or beautiful butterfly. Butterflies are insects. So we're now ready to mis refine our miscues even more. So this time again, we're looking for um, insertions. So put in that insertion mark and add, you know, what he left out. We're going to be looking at omissions. So circle anything that, any words that he left. Self-correct, so make sure you put in the SC, repeats, and pauses. So we're going to try to refine it now. And also this time, I want you to be listening for the actual tone of the read. So if he is reading like this, you're going to make a note of that. And you're going to put just a mark a slash in between two or three words to show that he's doing that throughout the read. There. These scales give the butterfly its beautiful colors. After you've listened to the recording um, as many times as necessary and you've made a lot of marks on here and it's like beginning to look a little bit like a dog's breakfast, right? Yeah. So what I do finally is I clean it up and I try to really isolate 
the actual errors because it's going to look messy, that's a guarantee. So then I make a nice clean copy with nice, nicely sort of marked up with uh, clearly visible Miss Q codes on there. So I've got self-corrects, I've got substitutions, I've got insertions, I've got omissions. So now it's going to be easy for me to actually total up um, these um, Miss Qs and find out if this is actually independent reading level or if it's instructional or frustration. So I noticed here right in the first paragraph, even though we don't, uh, we're not counting that, he read bidding once and then he self-corrected, okay? And there start the line starting insect. You indicated there that this read was word by word. So there was a lack of fluency here and that was basically throughout, mm -hmm. but you only needed to indicate that just a few times to show us that that's something that's going on. Um, there, it is the beautiful butterfly. So he omitted the the, he added an a, and he inserted the word beautiful, but it actually doesn't change the meaning of, it doesn't interfere with the actual mm -hmm. meaning of this passage, okay? So in the next uh, paragraph here, in the second line, he paused before the word tiny, um, and he's continuing to read word by word. Over here, he's inserted, he's omitted these scales, and he's inserted their scales. Again, it doesn't really change the meaning. Um, and the sentence starting using their long, thick, he, he inserted mm -hmm. thick um, instead of thin, and he paused before antenna, and he inserted an S, antennas. Uh, then his butterflies can, so that does change the meaning. So instead of saying butterflies can't bite or chew, he read butterflies can. So that is not a meaningful substitution. So going down further, um, use long tubes. So he inserted the S, tubes like tongues. Again, doesn't change the meaning really. Uh, next paragraph, caterpillar from a hard skin instead of forms a hard skin. And that doesn't really change the meaning either, uh, from a hard skin. Next line, again, he inserted, he obviously likes beautiful butterflies, he's uh, beautiful butterflies, and with colors wings, so he's admitted the full there. Um, and then he's adult, he's repeated adult. He's added an S to the adults. He's self-corrected and uh, read adult. And then uh, that's pretty well ill for the 100 words. So let's total that up now and see what it tells us. Before we actually begin to, you know, total up now the miscues on that read, we're going to make sure that we're not counting um, errors that should not be counted in the final total. So let's take a quick look at our uh, sheet here, our cheat sheet. So the self-correct is uh, noted but not counted. The repeat... Repetitions noted but not counted. The long pause again noted but not counted. So the ones we are looking at counting are the um, substituting one word for another, omitting word phrase or um, punctuation, inserting words that are not there, and then any reversals that are counted. Okay? Right there at the beginning on the second line, even though we're not counting, as I mentioned, that first paragraph, that's the warm-up. We're only counting the miscues in 100 words. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but we still look at that. So he, he said bidding and then he self-corrected to biting. Okay. So you've noted on there that, so you've noted on there that, um, he has been reading word by word. So you've done those uh, hashes in between the letters. So he's reading word by word. Mm -hmm. And then he did a substitution there. A ah, for the, and he, he inserted beautiful. But again, not in the 100 words, so we're not going to count it. So let's start looking at the 100 words. So sec the second line there, P, pause. We're not counting that. But we are counting there. So that's one. Okay, next Miss Q, there was a um, substitution, thick for thin, so that's two. We're not counting the P. Um, he added an S at the end of antenna, so that's three. 
Um, he said can instead of can't, so that's four. Tubes like, added an S, five. Okay, and then just down below that, he said from instead of form, so that's six. He um, added beautiful, seven. And then color, colors instead of colorful, eight. And then he did a repeat and a self-correct with adult. He added S, that would be nine. Okay, so in a hundred words, he's actually made nine miscues. If we look here at the scale at the bottom of our cheat sheet, independent level is between one and five miscues. So he made nine, so he's over the, you know, the five level. He's into the instructional level, five to ten. Um, but it's within his reading range. It's not frustration level. Even though I, you know, we've noticed on the basis of the, um, our miscues that he's made over five errors, I would still make a judgment here based on the quality of the miscues, mm -hmm. you know, adding an S here or there, um, mm -hmm. are not really that significant. So I would place this um, form three, sorry, form C level three, which is grade three expository reading passage as an independent reading level passage for this student. If the teacher's analysis of the read um, indicates that this is an independent level piece of text for the student, then the teacher can now um, go to the assessment protocols and follow up with the, with the comprehension questions. If the an analysis of the read suggests that in fact it is not independent level, that it's you know instructional level or closer to frustration level, then the student is going to really struggle with the comprehension protocols, and at that point the teacher is going to want to go down one or more levels until that independent level read has been established.